Game Changers is IGN's look at the people behind the games that change the industry. In the summer of 2008, Jonathan Blow released Braid. This influential, emotionally charged puzzle platformer quickly became a huge critical and commercial success. It changed the way the industry looked at indie developers forever. In 2004, having spent more than a decade working as a programmer, Blow was growing listless. It took me a long time to figure out that I need to be working on the things that I care about the most, right? And as long as I'm doing that, then I have no problem putting in infinite amounts of work. It was around the end of this year, the initial ideas for Braid began to come together. Some of my friends were arguing about rewind in video games. Um, a recent game that had come out at that time was Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. Some of the other people were arguing, well, uh, if you do that, you're gonna take away all consequence from games, and isn't that a bad thing? But what bugged me was like nobody actually was interested enough to try it, right? People just talked about it. And I guess that's a common theme everywhere, right? It's hard to try things, it takes work. But right about then, I was looking for a new thing to spend time on, so I said, why don't I do this thing? Blow's vision was equal parts mechanical and narrative. He sought to fix this lack of time travel consequence and marry it with a narrative that was open to interpretation, drawing inspiration from some of his favorite novels. So the interesting thing about Braid was that starting very early in development, like the first two weeks or something, I knew that it was a very special game. I was very excited about it in a different way, in a more direct way than I had been excited about earlier ideas. And I knew that there was a lot to do there. Now the trick is it always takes you a lot longer than you thought. I wanted every situation in the game to be unique, right? I didn't want to just have some levels with some monsters that you jump on, but there's rewind and that's being a crutch to make the game interesting. When you zoom in with your attention on every little part and then you add all the parts together, that's just a lot of effort. And so all those things added up to make development take a lot longer than I thought. In all, it would take Blow an additional three years to complete work on Braid. By that point, he was in tremendous debt and facing the prospect of marketing a game at a time when indie games were largely unknown. And so Valve was very skeptical about even the idea that Steam could sell independent games, and they rejected it. The, the number that was given to me at the time was, you know, less than 5,000 people are ever going to buy this game on Steam. So, so that seemed like that at the time. By mid-2007, Braid had been showcased at conferences like GDC several times and had won awards like the Independent Games Festival's Design Award. But more importantly, it had caught the attention of Microsoft. The company was pushing to get more original games on its growing Xbox Live Arcade platform, and it chose Braid to be among the initial Summer of Arcade promotion. Microsoft was working hard to expand the games housed on Xbox Live Arcade, and games like Braid and Castle Crashers helped change gamers' perception of the platform. Braid was a success, selling over 55,000 copies in its first week and garnering unanimous critical praise. Critics compared the game to its obvious influences like Super Mario Bros. and Donkey Kong, but also praised Braid's innovative and engrossing puzzles and narrative. It was instantly considered an achievement in the medium. But success can often be as much about great timing as it is about making a great game. There's a relatively large amount of luck or serendipity or just hitting the right thing at the right time, um, which Braid also had. You know, like if Braid had come out a year later, maybe it wouldn't have been as, as successful. But I think the reason Braid is appreciated is that it was financially successful while also being uh, a, a relatively large stretch from what games usually did. You know, usually if someone says, oh, I'm going to make a platformer on Xbox Live Arcade, you sort of get it. Would have had a picture of what that looked like. And, and that picture in 2007 is very different from the picture in 2010. Or, and, and Braid was one of the steps in, in that picture changing. In the coming years, Xbox Live would continue to champion small and indie games in its summer of arcade promotion and increasingly all year long. Valve reversed course and made Steam much more indie friendly, and Sony revamped PSN to feature more experimental games as well. Braid paved the way for games like Explosion Man, Limbo, and Bastion to become big hits with critics and consumers alike. But more importantly, Braid put indie game developers in the spotlight. The entire industry was now looking their direction. The number of gamers interested in games from small teams was skyrocketing. You know, at the time, if you just talk about how many people played it in the first year or something, right? And 
I think that's possible because the audience now is so much bigger, right? Braid was 2008, right? That was a kind of a fledgling game audience. And now, you know, even in those first few years, games on live arcade that were hits got bigger and bigger because 09, 010, 11, right? People kept flocking to that channel because they realized now there are games there that I might be interested in, right? And so that's happened on Steam as well. And uh, the audience for Steam just gets bigger every year. So the potential to have a big hit is always there and actually gets bigger over time. In less than a decade, the way gamers and developers alike think about the independent game scene has radically changed. Some indie games receive an almost equal amount of attention and accolades as their AAA counterparts. Indie games top best of lists and continue to innovate across a broad spectrum of genres and art styles. Much of this continued success can be traced back to Jonathan Blow's surprise hit, now almost a decade old. Next time on Game Changers, we take a look at Baldur's Gate and Fallout, two computer RPGs and the punk rock teams that changed the genre forever. Game Changers Episode 2 arrives on November 21st. Until then, stay tuned to IGN.